Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC Interactomics course. In our previous lecture, we discussed about the general workflow of NAPA focusing on plasma DNA extraction. In today's lecture, we will speak about the subsequent steps involved in performing NAPA based experiments including surface chemistry, printing, quality control checks and protein expression. Let us first understand the importance of surface chemistry. The surface chemistry determines the immobilization of proteins and truly defines an essential aspect of protein array fabrication. Orientation of immobilized protein and its binding strength affect the downstream interactions and are crucial determinants of any study. The carboxylic functional groups on proteins usually bind to the amino surface through electrostatic interactions. Thiol groups to malamide surface through covalent thioether binding and hydroxy group to epoxy surfaces through covalent ether binding. Functional groups on a protein allow immobilization on slight surface through covalent or non-covalent bonds based on functional groups present in them. The nucleophilic residues of proteins are immobilized by reactive surfaces coated with aldehyde, NHS ester, epoxicide, etc. Chemoligation is an azide based example of site specific immobilization. Non-covalent interactions are driven through different affinity tags like histidine, GST and streptividin to their respective ligands or antibodies. After completing the DNA prep, you need to now functionalize the glass slide surface for printing purpose. One can use different types of surface for example, glass, gold, nitrocellulose, hydrogel, etc. There are different properties that one needs to look for selecting the surface. Cost is of the major factor when you are talking about experiments such as biomarker discovery. In such screening based experiments, you need to use hundreds of chips for several hundreds of patients and therefore, the cost is one of the major factor. If you have a glass slide which is cost effective, so it would allow you to perform large number of experiments. In such a scenario, gold becomes very costly in comparison to nitrocellulose or hydrogens. The reactivity for the glass is moderate, so is the case with nitrocellulose and hydrogens. Gold in comparison has much low reactivity. Absorption to surface is low for gold and glass and is high in case of nitrocellulose and hydrogels. This platform can be made compatible to mass spectrometry using cold surface. Thus, depending on the broader goal of the experiment, one can choose an appropriate surface. These surfaces can be appropriately fabricated using different types of chemistry including amino groups or thiol esters. Let us first focus on silane based chemistry. We will talk about printing DNA on the array surface for using cell free expression based NAPA microarrays. Silicon based chemicals contain two types of groups such as alkoxyl groups like methoxy or ethoxy 
और ऑर्गेनो फंक्शनल ग्रुप्स सच एज इम्यूनो एपॉक्सी वाइनाइल एक्सेट्रा दस गिवन आवर एम डी एन ए कैन बी अटैच कोवेलेंटली ऑन द ग्लास सर्फेस बाई बेकिंग द अरेट सर्फेस एट एटी फाइव डिग्रीज यू वी क्रॉस लिंकिंग इज ऑल्सो ए पॉपुलर मेथड फॉर डी एन ए इमोबलाइजेशन एमाइनो सैलेन कोटेड स्लाइड्स प्रोवाइड हाई कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ प्राइमरी अमाइनो ग्रुप्स ऑन द चिप सर्फेस वन क्वेश्चन दैट मे अराइज इज दैट वाई शुड वी यूज दिस केमिस्ट्री अमाइनो ग्रुप्स प्रोवाइड ए पॉजिटिव चार्ज वेन प्लेस्ड इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद द न्यूट्रल एक्व सोल्यूशन द ग्रुप्स बिकम पॉजिटिवली चार्ज एज यू नो द डी एन ए बैकबोन पॉजिज ए निगेटिव चार्ज सो डी एन ए बैकबोन फॉर्म्स मल्टीपल आयोनिक इंटरेक्शंस विथ पॉजिटिव चार्ज एमाइनो ग्रुप कोटिंग एज यू कैन सी इन दिस ग्लास स्लाइड फॉर परफॉर्मिंग एमाइनो सैलियन कोटिंग वन नीड टू हैव ग्लास स्लाइड्स एसिटोन एमाइनो साइलिन यूजिंग ए टू परसेंट एमाइनो साइलिन सोल्यूशन इन एसिटोन वर्क बेस्ट देन यू नीड ए मेटल स्लाइड रैक एंड यू नीड ए रॉकिंग शेकर इन द स्लाइड वेरियस स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन परफॉर्मिंग एमाइनो सेलिन कोटिंग आर मैंशन ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ए रॉकिंग शेकर हैज ए ग्लास ट्री विथ ए मेटल रैक कंटेनिंग थर्टी स्लाइड्स एट द इंसेट यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दीज थर्टी स्लाइड्स इन द मेटल रैक आर सबमर्ज इन द एमाइनो सेलिन सोल्यूशन ऑन द बॉटम पैनल ऑन द राइट साइड आई हैव शोन दैट द स्लाइड्स कैन बी आई देर सेंटिफ्यूज और ड्राइड विद अ कॉम्प्रेस्ड एयर एंड दोज आर रेडी फॉर प्रिंटिंग पर्पज एमाइनो सेलिन कोटिंग इज डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड इन फॉलोइंग एनिमेशन प्रिपेयर थ्री हंड्रेड एम एल ऑफ एमिनो साइलिन कोटिंग सोल्यूशन विच इज टू परसेंट ऑफ एमिनो साइलिन रिजेंट इन एसिटोन प्लेस द स्लाइड इन मेटल रैक ट्रीट ग्लास स्लाइड इन एमिनो साइलिन कोटिंग सोल्यूशन फॉर अराउंड फिफ्टीन मिनट्स इन ग्लास बॉक्स ऑन शेकर rinse with acetone and followed by brief rinsing with milly q water after washing steps are done then you can spin dry in the speed bag printing dna or protein features on the chip surface first of all you need to make a master mix or printing mix in case of napa as i mentioned earlier you have four components bsa bs3 cross linker cdna containing the gst tag and an antibody which is anti gst antibody let me briefly explain the role of these components bsa dramatically improves immobilization and efficient expression of the dna bs3 bsa and capture antibody they are coupled to the amine coated glass surface where ester terminated homo bifunctional cross linker is printed the cdna contains gst tag or you can introduce any other tag then you need to have the capture antibody so that the express proteins can be captured with the antibody to a c terminal gst tag on each protein once we have these four components ready then you are ready to perform the printing the bs3 cross linker is a water soluble non cleavable and membrane impermeable the amino reactive group of n hydroxy sulfo succinamide sulfo nhs are separated by the spacer of eight carbon atoms and each protein contains a terminal amino group 
once you have these components ready, you are ready to perform the printing. You first need to define various parameters on the software. You need to define the type of pins you are going to use. For example, one can use 48 pins for printing several features simultaneously or even go as low as 1 or 4 pins. This could be of different microns ranging usually between 150 to 300 microns depending on what kind of density you want to achieve on the chip. You want to ensure maintenance of humidity throughout the experiment. 60 percent humidity is ideally maintained. You need to define the source plate which is being used for printing. We must state if we have one or multiple plates type of arraying pattern differs. These things have to be programmed before placing the 384 well plates containing the master mix which would be used for the printing purpose. One need to ensure that different type of robotic parameters are in place. Let me show you this animation to explain you the procedure for master mix preparation and the steps involved in printing. So, prepare enough master mix so that you can do printing for large number of arrays. The master mix contain DNA, polyclonal GST antibody, BSA and BS3 linker. For detailed recipe of each of these reagent, you can follow the publication manuscript by Ramachandran et al. 2008 published in Nature Methods. Once master mix is prepared, you can mix it well. And then transfer 20 microliter of master mix to the block containing plasmid DNA. Once the master mix is added to all the wells in the block, then you need to shake the plate for 15 minutes. For printing, you will require 384 well plates. So, now you need to transfer your master mix containing plasmid DNA from the 96 well plate to the 384 well plate. Again, these steps can be performed either using multi channel pipettes or by using liquid handling systems. Once master mix is prepared and transferred into the 384 well plate, we can perform the printing step. So, we can use these micro arrays to print the DNA and the master mix on aminosilane coated glass slides. First you need to ensure that pins are washed thoroughly. You can wash with ethanol and water. And during entire printing procedure, we need to ensure that humidity is maintained at 45 to 60 degrees. One can use different type of pin heads and different type of micro arrays for printing the chip. Now, these master mix can be printed on the chip. Control features. What are the different types of control features you need to put on the array? Let us briefly discuss that. As mentioned earlier, you need to ensure 
the different types of control features are spread across the array surface and these could be mouse IgG, no DNA, non-spot, EBNA, human immunoglobulins etc. Depending on the disease context, the kind of problem you are working on, you can define good positive and negative controls. Now, to test the background, you need to have certain control features. Since we are talking about the NAPA arrays, we are talking about clones containing GST tags. It will be good idea to have different spots with GST alone. So, you can have the purified GST in dilution series. So, you can use the dilution series of increasing concentration of purified GST protein for normalization and doing the calculation for the protein expression later on. If you are looking for different type of immunological response in biomarker discovery etcetera, you need to ensure that immunoglobulin IgG is printed at the varying concentration. It can also be used for a statistical analysis that are run by the biostatistician, so that different types of protein expression can be normalized. Control features and QC checks are shown here in this slide. The same gene has been printed 4 times in the blocks repeated and then negative controls are used to estimate the background noise. What are the different quality check points to be kept in mind for good protein arrays? A spot to spot consistency is one of the key features. Positional consistency has to be there for a large number of slides. Sample loading, sample integrity as well as different types of controls, replicates and positional flexibility are needed to maintain the quality of protein arrays. As shown in this slide, one can encounter different type of problems while printing these arrays. Shown on the left side is a spot shape, size and morphology. Shown on the right side is a spot to spot consistency. Many a times these printing issues occur in high throughput type of experiments. So, we need to ensure that all these parameters are properly quality control checked. Looking at the spot morphology and the uniformity of this spot, one can think of various type of parameters that could be useful such as spotting solutions, spotter capability, maintaining the temperature, maintaining humidity conditions, keeping a dust free environment are important considerations. For printing quality arrays, you need to have precise liquid handling system. As I have mentioned, each step can be automated. You need to keep track of the entire process, so you can troubleshoot if anything goes wrong at any step. It is good idea to build a detailed log history for each step from cloning, DNA preparation, printing etcetera. Now, if you have done the step by step optimization and evaluation, there is less chance of making any errors, because in high throughput approaches, when we are dealing with thousands of features, it becomes important to track everything throughout the experiment and make note of the details. Now, we have done the printing and have ensured that the printing is of good quality by considering various parameters. However, can we now use these NAPA arrays for doing further biological experiments? So, first of all we have printed DNA. So, we have to ensure that DNA printing is good. To ensure that one can use pico green staining. Once the DNA quality is good one need to ensure 
that the proteins can be expressed from the DNA using in vitro transcription and translation expression system. So, the protein expression needs to be quality checked. Shown in the slide is a small test array which I used to teach the student from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York. These are actually made by these students in the proteomics course. In the bottom you have a map where only 5 genes are printed CDK4, CDK5, June, P53 and P21. Each one of those genes are printed in duplicates. Then you add the master mix and then water. This is a very simple proof of concept test array. These are only 5 features, 5 genes which we have DNA. So, ideally you must observe the pico green staining to check the DNA printing quality. You can see on the upper panel those green spots lighting up indicate that the DNA has been printed properly. One can use the statistical tools for analyzing how good the DNA is printed on the chip surface. If you are printing 200 slides, 100 in batch 1 and 100 in batch 2, then you need to ensure that both the batches can be used for same experiment and those data is comparable. So, batch to batch variability in printing must be minimized for both DNA staining as well as the protein expression. Once the DNA is quality control checked, then you need to move on to the protein expression testing. In this slide I have shown a schematic of various steps involved in performing NAPA based protein expression. So, once you have a slide you need to block the exposed area to avoid non specific binding. Then you can use IVTT system. So, the proteins are expressed and then you want to detect the signal. So, you can add the primary antibody in this case here anti GST antibody followed by the secondary antibody containing either psi 3 or psi 5 labels or one could also use a horse radish peroxidase based tyramide signal amplification system TSA based system. Here is a proof of concept a small array. These proteins need to be QC'd here. One could use the anti GST antibody and now you can see that only 5 proteins in duplicates are expressed whereas, master mix and water are blank and same can be plotted on the graph which is shown on the right hand side. Now, you have tested protein expression, but you want to ensure how specific is the protein expression. To ensure a specific protein expression, one can also use a protein specific antibody. In this case, we have used anti P53 antibody to find out P53 protein printed on the chip surface. As you can see in the middle panel, only one pair of a spot is lighting up, which shows that only P53 can be detected. The intensity can be plotted in a graph as shown in the right panel. This is an overview of the quality control checks that one has to perform during whole NAPA procedure. Before you use these printed arrays for testing any biological questions, you need to ensure that DNA is properly printed which is shown in the left side with pico green stain. Next to that is protein expression by using anti GST antibody and protein specific expression by using anti P53 antibody. Again one needs to look into the batch to batch variability for the protein expression. If you print GST purified protein in different concentration as shown in the bottom side, those can be used to determine how much protein is produced on each feature. So, batch to batch coefficient of variation sample to sample CV as well as replicate CV should be calculated. Now, once you have looked at day to day variations, then also look at different types of other variability such as spot to spot, slide to slide and day to day. 
again plot it as shown in this graph, it shows that NAPA arrays are quite reproducible. Let me show you this animation for quality control sheets and how to detect DNA and protein expression on this chip surface. Once the arrays are printed, then we need to perform the quality control checks whether DNA printing was appropriate on these chips. The storage form of NAPA microarrays is merely DNA. So, in an activated array, all following reactions elapse in the solution and in the real time. Therefore, restrictions caused by the instability of proteins occur very rarely. To perform the DNA staining, first prepare the pico green stock solution, dilute it in the milk or super block. Block the chips with the super block for an hour and after blocking is done, then we can use the pico green mix to place on the these printed slides. So, let us first look at the NAPA expression on the slide and then I will describe about a scanning for both DNA printing and the protein expression at the same time. So, first you need to prepare the in vitro transcription translation mix which contains TNT buffer, T7 polymerase, amino acid, RNAs inhibitor and DEPC water. Apply that on the slide which contains the hybrid gasket and then seal the pores. Now, this printed slide which contain plasmid DNA they have the in vitro transcription translation mix shown in the red color here. And the next step will be to incubate these slides for the protein expression step. So, incubate the chips for 1.5 hour at 30 degrees for protein expression followed by 30 minutes at 15 degrees which allows the protein to bind on the anti capture antibody. After this incubation is done, then we need to wash the slides. So, remove the hybrid well, wash with milk in PBS for 3 times, 3 minutes each. Now, block the slide with milk or super block at the room temperature for an hour. After blocking is done, then we need to drain the excess liquid on a paper towel and then we are ready to perform the incubation with the primary antibody. So, apply primary antibody which is mouse anti GST in this case because we are looking for the protein expression and all the clones contain a GST tag. So, we need to add the primary antibody on the chip which is already expressed proteins are there. And after adding the primary antibody, we need to incubate it for an hour at the room temperature. Now, place the cover slip so that liquid is uniformly placed and then we need to perform the washing steps after an hour. Proper washing is very important for all the micro experiments. Now, we need to add the secondary antibody in this case anti mouse HRP and incubate again for an hour at the room temperature. After secondary antibody incubation, we need to wash with PBS 3 times and then apply teramide signal amplification system for signal detection. 
After adding the TSA solution and incubation, then we need to wash the arrays in water very quickly so that excess TSA is removed. Now, we need to dry the slides with the compressed air or drying step can also be performed by using centrifugation. Now, we will see animation for the scanning slides. Whether you have done the QC experiment of DNA detection or protein expression, now you need to scan the slides. The different type of scanners available including the those ones which are automated and multi slides can be scanned in the automated way. First you can preview the scan. And then you can adjust different type of settings to see the signals better. Then you can look at each reason in the zoomed in X view and look for the signal. In summary, today we discussed about how to make Napa protein arrays. Similar workflows can be followed for other type of cell free expression based microarrays as well. To make the Napa arrays, having access to the cDNA clones is required. One can perform recombinational cloning or obtain good clones from various repositories and grow them in cultures. The purified plasmids along with master mix can be used for spotting on the arrays. Now, these can be used on the microarrays which can do the printing. Once printed, these slides can be stored at the room temperature. Once you have performed all quality control checks, these arrays can be used for different types of biological applications. This concludes our discussion on detailed workflow of constructing Napa protein arrays. In the next few lectures, we shall talk about data generation, interpretation and a detailed overview of microarray data analysis. Thank you.